just saying that. Okay. Am I telling the truth? Yes, sir. Yep. Put that out. <laughs> <laughs> then we open the Bible. Now, it's sailing God's word. And we put that judgment on pretty hard. <laughs> but we forget that the Lord is merciful. Amen. You, it's the love of God and the mercy of God that brings the sinner to repentance. Sure, I was scared of the Lord all these years, all them years when I was acting up. I was I had fear of God. I was scared of him. But I figured he was that way out there, weren't looking at me. There were so much other things he was looking at. But I, I was scared of him. But that wouldn't that's not what caused me to repent. What caused me to repent was the mercy and the love that he showered down upon me. And then I just fell to my knees and just melted. Yep. Anybody ever been there? <coughs> you just melt. You melt because of the mercy and the love of God it hits your heart. Now, I ain't talking about this whole fault, fault, false faith and mercy that they're preaching in certain churches and this greasy grace and sloppy and copy. I'm talking about the real mercy of God. The real mercy of God never compromises his word. He lets you know what error is and what sin is in our lives, but He also is merciful while He's letting you know that. Amen? There's a big difference in the church today. They use this scripture for lasciviousness and for covetousness. And all this, the Holy Spirit does it. The Holy Spirit shows you what you've been coveting. He shows you what you've been living in lasciviousness. He shows you this, but He shows you in mercy. And when He shows you in mercy, He's slow to anger. Have you noticed that? When He touches you, it's amazing. When He starts speaking to your heart, He's not condemning you. He's actually teaching you. That's the Holy Spirit. He's the what? The teacher. Oh, my goodness. And then when He starts teaching us by His Word, that love is so powerful, we want to come out. <laughs> because you felt the love of God. You say, oh, man, He loves me that much. I just love Him. Because the Bible says what? We love Him because He what? He first loved, loved us. Love. We fall in love with a passion for Him because He first showed us His everlasting love. Have you ever felt the everlasting love of God? Yes. Have you ever felt the tender mercies? Yes. Have you ever felt the judgment of man? Yes. <laughs> oh, the love of God doesn't bring religious bondage to man. That's a lie. Because when you felt the love of God and He dwells within you, you will walk up right according to His Word. It won't be a man's set of fence rules that you have to walk by. Because now God dwells in you. You don't need a high priest anymore because we have a high priest. Now, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He's the one that teaches us inside of our hearts and whether we're obedient to Him or not is between us and Him. It's not men that lays down laws of untendered mercy. <laughs> laws that they've made up or they actually interpreted wrong out of the scriptures to place on people. He dwells within you. In the Old Testament, they had to go to the priest to find out what's good and what's bad, what's right and what's wrong, good and evil. Now, what did I just take in Jeremiah a while ago? Now you will know him, and he will what? He will teach you what's good. And what's bad. That's the problem. That's why we have no discernment of good and evil. People call it evil good and good evil now because men have made up on both sides of the fence, whether it's illegalism or whether it's just lasciviousness. They're saying homosexuality is good now. The Episcopal Church says homosexuality is good. We're going to marry homosexuals in the church. And they open the Bible. Because people are running to who? Men for their word. And men have made that up. I think you got the other side. You must wear a burka over your head. Have your hair down to the floor. You're not covered. You have no covering. Which is demonic. Our covering is Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. That's why people will merge together. Islam and those people who are religiously legalistic like that will merge. They will love one another. People say there's no way. You watch and see what happens with the great whore in Revelation 17, Mystery of Babylon. They love their legalism without Christ without putting their faith in His finished work at the cross, that they will melt and merge together. That's why we better know the Word. Amen. We better know the Word of the living God and not the Word of man. Man's number is six. 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 Revelation 13, 18. The number of the beast, which will be a legalism, as you would believe if you read Revelation chapter 17, and you see all the colors 
that the high priest had to wear on the ephod. In Exodus, you'll see that on the great harlot, that one world religion that forms out of works. And that's where they're going to be judged on. In Revelation chapter 20, he's going to judge them at the great white throne by their what? Their works. Do you want to be judged by your works? Nope. Or would you rather to be judged by Christ's finished work? We better get hold of his word, do you? Because the enemy is going to try to confuse many people. Many are going to go into doctrines of religion and bondage, thinking that it's displeasing to God. There are people that strap bombs on themselves thinking they're pleasing God. They killed many Israelites. Hitler thought he was pleasing God. Yes, he was a religious person. Hitler was very religious. Except he was in witchcraft. That's religion. That's right. We're supposed to have a relationship. Right. Relationship is what Jesus just told the woman at the well. If you knew the gift of God. The woman at the well had religion. Did y'all know that? Yeah. Because the minute he called her out on something and the, and the gifts of the Spirit started moving and the word of knowledge came forth, she immediately went to religion. Y'all remember that? Yeah. And she's talking about how many times she's been married. And she goes, oh, I better go with religion. Mm -hmm. a prophet. <laughs> she said, I perceive you're a prophet. Well, let's talk about worship then. Let's get the focus off me and my life and let's talk about worship. That's what religion is. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? Don't we do that? Let's get the focus off the inner man and let's put it on the outer man. That way I look like I'm walking in holiness. Oh, I look so righteous because I got this on. Pretty sure, though. And I, I oh, I got to take my time pen out and my watch. I can't have a boy reading. <laughs> I look righteous. I look holy. But what's with inside of the individual? Amen. Is what Jesus is looking at. Amen. He's looking within the cup. And he's saying, okay, but that's exactly what she did. She goes, well, my, my father says we worship the Lord. We worship God on this mountain. You see what I'm saying? He was taking her inside, and he had something to draw with. <laughs> he had the Holy Spirit drawing inside that well, not on the outside. He didn't condemn her for all the time she'd been married. He didn't condemn her for living with the person she was living with out of wedlock. That's right. He started drawing within. He had the Holy Spirit to draw within. That's what he does to us even now. But we've got it backwards in the church as a whole, and we've gone to outer works instead of inner heart. I don't know how I got off on that rabbit, but it's good. Keep chasing, brother. <laughs> <laughs> he will not chide. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins. Think about that one. Nor regarded us according to our iniquities. Because if he dealt with us after our sins and not in mercy, Every one of us would be burnt up. 